International fishing with Bloodworm and Joker is massively on the rise now in the UK. It's becoming ever more popular. We're in March now, which means only one thing for me, the famous Census Challenge, one of the biggest team events of the year. I'm just coming back off the back of an individual Bloodworm League on this very venue, the Gloucester Canal. So I've brought you back today. And I just want to talk you through some ground bait mixes with leams and soils, how you need to be mixing them, how to introduce them into your peg, how, how I'm feeding with Joker, and just run you through the basics of this style of fishing. As I said, it's such a popular way of fishing now, it's really, really gaining some momentum. So I'm just gonna give you a few tips and tricks and show you what I like to do with this style of fishing. So first up is the mixing of the ground bait. I've already mixed my ground bait up now, and as you'll see there, it's very, very over wet. Now you'd think that's too wet to be able to use, but when I'm gonna add lean to that mix, it's gonna suck some moisture out of that ground bait and actually create the perfect mix. So I'm gonna add those two together now, get it whizzed up, and I'll show you the finished article. So in there, I've got four pints of ground bait, mixed ground bait, wet ground bait, and I've got six pints of damp lean in this, in this bucket here. So that's gonna be my mix. Six parts of lean to four parts of ground bait. That's sort of my happy medium on a venue like this where you're fishing for roach and skimmers. Roach tend to like a little bit more ground bait. Skimmers tend to like less. So go in just, just past 50-50, go in 60-40% in favour of lean, I think is a nice happy medium to fish for both species of fish. So I'll get that whizzed up now. I'm just gonna get my lean added into my bowl of ground bait. I'm gonna pass it for a riddle at the same time. So like I said, six pints in there. Just gonna get that all in. Just start pushing that through my hand. Well, that's all in. I'm just gonna give that a spin round, get it all mixed up. <laughs> Now, as you see there, the amount of lean that I've added has dried that ground bait right out. So what I need to do now is get my sprayer and give that a real good spray up. And you'll know when it's done, just as it starts to ball up slightly, create little balls, that's when your mix is ready. Now, you never want to add water straight from a bowl to a lean mix. You'll absolutely ruin it. It'll just go to a sloppy, claggy, horrible mess. So get yourself a nice, good quality sprayer. It might take a little while to get it right, but it's worth it in the end. So let's give it a spray up. Right, now that's just getting there now. As you can see, that's just starting to ball up. That's not ready yet, but this is the crucial point now because we're getting close and you, don't, you do not want to over wet it. That another little witness pump. Really, really take your time with this. You don't want to go too far. Keep checking it. Stop every now and again to check it. Because also, when we're adding things like worms and joker, the joker holds a bit of moisture. Obviously, when you chop your worms up, it's full of moisture. So we don't want to end up with an over-wetted mix. So that now is ever so slightly still too dry. But we're really, really close now. A couple more sprays up, and that's going to be perfect. And we'll pass it back for a riddle. There, that's done now. Now that's the sort of consistency I'm looking for. If you see that there, it's 
just starting to ball up slightly, just making little, almost beads up a bit. And that's just where the lean is clagging together and just forming tiny balls. If I went any further with that, I'd be in a right mess and my mix would be unusable. But that now, it's just about nice. I'm gonna get that passed through a riddle, get some more air into it, fluff it up nice, and we're good to go. I'm gonna hop on the box, separate some mixes out, add some joker, add some other baits, and I'm gonna show you the way I like to approach a venue like this and how I'm gonna sort my mixes out. So let's get that done now. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna feed my peg. Now, we've got our ground weight mix done now, 60% lean, 40% ground bait. And the ground bait that you use is really, really important. Because you're putting less of a percentage of ground bait in, what that ground bait is, is vital to draw fish into you. So I've gone with two parts deep water and one part sweet skimmer. Just a nice little blend. The deep water is lovely and salty, which I've always found to be best on these sorts of venues where some brackish water gets into the venue. Uh, and then you've got the sweet skimmer, which is lovely and rich, biscuity. The fish really like to feed on that. And that's going to draw some fish in from all angles, I feel. So I've opted for two lines today, one at a, true, at a long 13 metres and one just back on the slope. Uh, so the shorter one, I'm going to be targeting more roach there. So I've just got my balls made up there. I've just got four balls with just some joker in. Personally, I think roach, they only want to eat joker. There's no point feeding any other baits because all they're interested in is the joker. So I've just got four balls made up there. And uh, one crucial thing there is the size of these balls. They're not huge, they're not going to break the pole, but what they are is exactly the size of my pole pot. So when I ship them out and pot them in, I'm going to tip that over and it just, just clings to the pot and comes out. It's not going to spin out of the pot and end up rolling and spinning away from where I've plumbed up. Because I'm on that shelf, I need to be dead accurate. So that's a really good tip to give you there. And then on my longer line, I'm hoping to catch some better fish. I'm hoping to catch some skimmers, maybe even a bream. So all I've got there, I've got five balls there with not a lot of bait in. I'm just going to spread them around a little bit, make a bit of a carpet. Like I said, fishing for bigger fish, I don't want everything tight and concealed. I want a little bit of an area for them to graze over, but then I'm going to create a sweet spot in the middle of that. And I've got four, three, three decent sized ones and one little one. That's just what my mix made. Really, really rich for bait. So I've got 125 mil of joker in there and a nice, a nice palm full of worms and a few dead pinkies. In my roach mix is just 100 mil of joker. So I'm gonna spin round now, get them potted in, show you what I do, and there we go. Start off with that shorter line. Like I said, those balls just fit perfectly in the pot there. And whiz them out. Right, right on the end of my pole. Line up with my marker, take your time doing it. You need to make sure this is dead accurate. There we are, I'm on my marker. I'm gonna spin that round, pot in. Get the rest of them in. Now in these international rules matches, you only get 10 minutes to feed. You get a 10 minute pre-baiting period. So you need to be nice and efficient at this. You've got to take your time, make sure everything's accurate but make sure you're quick enough potting them out to be, to be done within time. You know, these are heavy balls, they're full of lean, but you know, trust your pole. I know my pole's more than up to the task to pot these big heavy balls in. There we go. Last one. Nice and accurate. And with that roach line, contrary to the, uh, the longer line, I'm keeping that dead tight because I want to be on top of that all the time. I mean, bloodworm and joker fishing is all about getting things down and getting the fish in the joker, scoffing on the joker. We're going to be fishing positive rigs, getting down to them and uh, straight down to the fish and get amongst them. So I'm going to move on to my longer line now. Same thing, I'm just going to pop those five balls in spread them around a little bit of an area, probably two or three feet, three feet probably. And then we put those rich ones smack in the center of that. Just gonna whiz them out. Just gonna pop a couple of them just short of my dolly butt there. Just go just to the left of me mark there. 
Put that one in. Same again, but I'm just going to go just to the right this time. Three more. I'll pop these ones on the end of my dolly, but this time, so I've got. 50 centimetres difference between the width of those balls, so I'm creating a nice little radius there. Again, first one just to the left. So what I'm doing there is just creating two lines of bait, really. Sort of 50 centimetres apart. What they're doing, they'll be breaking up really quickly, those balls. So that's going to create a nice little radius of bait for me, but with not a lot of actual feed in it. So that first one potted just to the left. This one's going to go smack in the middle. And this last one of those five is just going to go just to the right. Check your sections, you don't want anything coming apart. There we go, this one's gonna go just to the right. So I've spread them over probably three feet there. And these final few, these are the important ones. These got all my bait in, this is my sweet spot. This is what's gonna drag the fish, concentrate him, on a, on a smaller area of my big area where I can nail my rig over the top and intercept a fish. There we go, we'll get them in. And again, these are gonna go right on the end of the section. So right at the back edge of that feed. I don't wanna feed anything past that because as we all know with skimmers, fishing just past your bait can be absolutely brilliant. So you need that option to be able to go past. I've got another dolly butt with me, which will take my pole to a true 13 meters, which is another 50 centimeters past where I'm feeding these again. So I've got that option to go past. I'm not too fussed about putting the pole between my legs in the rest to pop these ones in, even though I will fish with my pole in the rest at times, because at certain times I will like to hold my pole as well wind getting up there makes it a bit difficult but we're all right there we go smack in the middle of that area there two more Last little one for luck, I'm not going to leave him behind. I'm going to get him in as well. And there we have it, that's the peg fed. I'm going to ship back now, get a hook bait on and uh, hopefully catch one pretty quickly. Right, there we go, we're in, pegs fed. I'm having a little fish now. I'm straight into a few fish. Nice little dumpy roach on there. Lovely fish to start the session off they are. So I'm just starting on that shorter line that I've fed, around 10 metres. Reason being, there's slightly less bait there. I fed more bait on that longer line. I just want to leave it to settle a bit more. Just going into my bloodworm pot there, picking a nice small bloodworm out. That's what you want for the roach. Nice, small, lively bloodworm. We'll ship out and we'll have another go. 
just show you when I get there how to put your rigging. Because it is quite important with bloodworm fishing. So what I'm doing there, because I'm fishing on a slope, I'm just flicking my bulk just out past my pole. And I'm going to drop my float down to a foot above the surface. And what I'm going to do, obviously lining up with my marker, I'm just going to let that all straighten out. And I'm going to lower it in really slowly. The wind's making it a bit difficult for me, but there we go. Nice and slow. Right, now I'm in. I'm in on my bait. Hopefully, we won't have to wait too long for a bite. But like I said before, with, with bloodworm and joker fishing, it's all about just concentrating the feed. The, all they want is the joker. That's all they're interested in. It's not about fishing through the water and things like that. It's about getting your rig down positively on top of your bait where the fish are feeding. They're, the fish will only ever be on the bottom and up to four inches off the bottom, just intercepting those odd jokers that are bouncing off the bottom. You won't catch them any higher off the bottom than that. It's all about positivity. Didn't get a bite straight away then, so I'm just gonna lift it again, lower it slowly, that wind is nasty. Try and do it the best I can. Little bite there, only a small fish there this time. Small roach. Wind's a bit nasty. It's right though, they all count. It's all competition on my feed, I'm not too worried about that. Good thing is as well, I know that there's there's mouths there eating that bait. I know that I'm not getting a build up of bait there that's being left. Go in again. Same thing again. Swing out, just past. Drop it down quickly and hold it now. Just gonna let that straighten out. Hopefully that wind's gonna be a bit nicer this time and let me lower it in nicely. There we go. You can just see that straightening out now. You'll see everything register. That's nice in a nice straight line now. Just gonna lower that slowly. Just fishing dead depth, so any indication on my float, I'm going to see instantly. I'm not fishing over depth at all. So as soon as a fish picks my bait up, I'm going to see that on my float like that. There we go. That's, that's a lovely example that is to go straight in, lower it in nice and slow, and quite often you'll catch one as soon as you lower it in. That's a lovely roach as well. Probably two, two and a half ounces. Really, really nice weight building fish they are. And all that's doing is. I can really build a nice weight there before I want to go long and look for my bonus fish. So if I can get, if I can catch a few pound, three or four pound on this line before I even think about going long, I'm really, really in a good position then. I'm really in the driving seat to be able to go out long, have a look for a quality fish. And if I get one, then it's game on. And we're really, really going to catch a good weight then. Same again, really just get yourself in a rhythm with this sort of fishing, just keep repeating that process, get used to it, get yourself in a routine, we'll do it again. Nice and slow. So that bloodworm now will just be touching the bottom. Perfectly dead depth, plumbed up to the bristle. Didn't get one straight away then, give it a few seconds. You know, this is an active style of fishing, so I didn't get a bite then. Just gonna lift again. Eight inches out, lowering slowly again. Little hold up bite then. So that, that fish then has grabbed hold of that bait as I've lifted it. So that fish was sat probably six inches off the bottom. Which are probably just intercepting jokers that are bouncing off the bottom. And what I've done by lifting my bloodworm up, like I said before, I'm only putting a small bloodworm on. That's imitating one of those jokers jumping off the bottom. And that's tricked that, that roach into, into taking him as I've lifted. My float didn't actually settle on the way back down then, which tells me he took it off the bottom. 
like I said, I'm just searching for the smaller bloodworms in my pot, trying to imitate the closest thing to a joker. That one's just burst then. Go in again. There we go, that's a lovely one. You know, you know, it is quite delicate bloodworms. You need to be careful when you're hooking it. You need to make sure that bait's pristine. If you burst the bait, you won't get a bite. So let's go in again. Now you've heard me talking about how positive this style of fishing is, and my rigs reflect that. So on this rig here, this is just a one gram Kerry, 014 mainline, which you might think is a little bit heavy, but I want it stiff. We're fishing in deep water. I don't want any tangles. I want to be as efficient as possible. And then that's just running down to an 07 AccuPower hook length and a size 20 M40 hook. It's absolutely lovely. And the way I've got that shotted is just with a bulk and two droppers. Ooh, little indication then. A bulk and two droppers, number 10 droppers, and a little kicker below my bulk, which allows me to lift and drop my rig without, without those droppers coming up and coming over the top of my bulk. So I'm never going to get any tangles like that. Really, really nice rig. Again, all about positivity, just getting down to these fish, where they're feeding, and getting into them quick to get myself in the most efficient routine that I can. Give that another little lift. Now you'll see I'm being really active with this. You've got to be proactive with, with doing little things, moving your hook bait, trying to trick one into taking it. Right then, only a small fish. Right, well I'm going to keep going at this for a while and I might join you again when I have a little look out long to try and catch a bit of a better fish. There we go. First little look out long. Hooked what I think might be a little skimmer. A decent quality fish all the same. Let's see what it is. Yeah, there we go. A little skimmer. Get the net under him. Nice little start to get out on that long line. Hopefully, there's going to be a few bigger ones there. Drop them in the net. Like I said, this line, this longer line is all about being more positive. I'm going to try and target some bigger fish there. So, um, just got a 1.5 gram rig on there. Exactly the same float, Kerry, same main line. Um, and then down to an 09 hook length to a 16 M40 hook. I'm just going to put three bloodworm on there. Nice big visual hook bait to try and pick out one of those bigger fish. Just fishing three inches over depth on this rig. A bit different to the way you target roach. Roach you tend to fish for dead depth, just off bottom, that sort of thing. But these skimmers they feed they feed smack on the bottom. You want to get your hook bait over depth, hold the pole nice and still in your rest. Just wait for a bite then, hold it dead still. I'm not so fussed about lowering my rig in like I did on the shorter line with this, just about as long as I know I'm on top of my bait, let it straighten out. I'm just going to drop it down now. No need to lower it down. Now that's in position. I'm just going to wait for that float to set. I'm just going to sit there and wait until I get an indication. These front bars are so important for this style of fishing. With a bit of a skimmy wind on like we've got today, so important that you can hold your pole still and hold your rig still for these skimmers. If it's blowing around, you just won't catch them. It is really about pinpoint accuracy, fishing on top of your bait, knowing where you are. 
Yeah, that's, that's just nice now. big fish but nice stamp fish all the same probably another small skimmer no nice roach that is better not name nice stamp fish there four ounces I would have thought Might just try this time an even bigger hook bait, like maybe three blood worms and a pinky on as well, just to try and sort out a bigger fish. I know that there's some fish there feeding now, so I can I can probably try and be a bit more selective. Let's try that. Let's go with three blood worm and a dead pinky, I think. Nice bright fluoro, something nice and visual. back in position, see if we can pick off a slightly better fish this time. So the next thing I need to be thinking about now is topping up. I know now I've got two lines that I can bounce off of, but I've got some fish on both, so I can just flick between the two and be able to keep topping my net up. Now, that's a smaller fish now, so that could be a sign that I need to top up. That, that tells me that a lot of that bait's been eaten. Um, and that some smaller fish might be there just lingering around. I'm just going to have one more go. If the same thing happens again, I'm going to do a little top-up mix and, and just put a little top-up in and see what response I get. Hopefully, by doing that, I can draw a few better fish back in. Go back in with the same hook bait again. Nice big hook bait, three blood worm and a dead pinky. Yeah, the, que the cues I'm looking for really with um, regards to when to top up. I can't, I can't tell you any hard and fast rules of, of when you should be topping up because you really need to feel it on the day. So like I just said then, that's small fish. I'll see you now if it's a coincidence. If I catch another one, that's definitely a sign to top up. Maybe if I catch a big fish, then, I, then I'd want to feed again because I can try and, that big fish will have come in and eaten a lot of bait just, just on its own. So if I catch one, I want to get a top up back in and then get back on top of it to try and concentrate some more there. Also, if the bites just slow up, if, I, you know, if the fishing just fades away, I'll know then how long I've been fishing, what I fed at the start, the amount of joker, everything's measured out. So I'll know what was fed and I'll know how long that joker's lasted then I can make a little top-up mix, measure that out as well so I know what, how much joker's in there and then I can top up and, I, and I'll be in control of when I'm topping up, how much joker I'm putting in and how long I'm getting out of each amount of joker. I can really, really be in control of my match. So that's all set now. It's worth saying, with the top-ups on here, this style of fishing, I'm, I'm going to be using a soil top up or a lean top up. You don't you don't want to be topping up with ground bait again after your initial feed. Ground bait's amazing at the start. You really really do need it to draw some fish to you. But once you've got the fish there, once they've found the bait, it's just about delivering them some more products, some more joker, some more worms, 
straight down to them. They're just by using a lemur or a soil mix, I can just deliver the bait that they want to eat to them in a neutral, in a neutral form. Nothing that's going to put them off. there. Oh, small fish I think. Yeah. So I'm going to whiz back in now. I'm going to get a little top up in and see what response I get to that. straight back in on top of that top up. Not a big fish, but it's still a better fish than what we ended up catching as that bait was running out, which just goes to show that, you know, it's brought some better quality fish straight back in. You know, it's only a roach, but well worth catching. Probably three, maybe four ounces. Really, really nice weight building fish they are. Like I said, they came instantly to that top up. Straight back on top of it. That's what it's all about, just concentrating fish. If you feel like you've lost them, the stamp gets smaller, get another top up in and just try and pin them again. Get them concentrated in one area. And you can just make it really easy, easy for yourself to pick them off then. You're constantly in touch with the fish and knowing you know the changes to make then. You know that you can you can feed a little bit. If they're coming straight back to a top up like that, that, that straight away tells me that, right, I can get away with feeding a bit of bait today. I don't have to be too cautious with it. Let's go straight back in, smack on top of that bait, right on top of where that top up's gone in. Get it between, get it in the bar. Just gonna hold that dead still. indication on the float then. There we go, hooked the fish. Looks like another roach. I'm just going to have one more put in. I think we'll call this the last one of the day. Hopefully we can get out there and end on a nice fish for you. But hopefully you've picked up a few nice tricks from today that you can put into your own fishing. And just to go and show how simple bloodworm fishing can be. It does get a bit of bad press that it's complicated and, and it's hard to do and it's fiddly, but it really, really is a simple but very, very effective way of fishing. See if we can catch a nice one to end on. Get him in, get him set. We're ready to go.
little indication straight away then. Oh, there we go. Big fish on there. That's going to be a lovely fish to end on. That was typical then of a big fish coming into your peg. A few little indications on the float before I had a bite. Which is, you know, is the telltale that there's one there. And that, that can't be any more than two minutes after I put that top up in that this fish has come into my peg, which just goes to show how effective it can be. It's going to be a skimmer. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant way to end the session, that. Maybe a pound and a half. Just unwrap it from his fins. But yeah, what a beautiful fish. And that's what the Gloucester Canal has to offer. So like I said, Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks today that can improve your fishing and just go to show how simple bloodworm and joker fishing can be. I absolutely love it. I hope you have some great days doing the same.